Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with the start of the college football season. I don't acknowledge week zero. It's week one. College football is here, and we have a huge Saturday card for this Saturday, September 4th. Five top 25 matchups. That's five games and with top 25 teams are playing each other. That means 10 of the top 25 are playing head-to-head -head this weekend on Saturday. Afternoon, mid-afternoon, early afternoon, late night, everything's covered here. I'm going to give you my power ratings for all five top 25 national TV matchups and also let you know which way I lean based on the line value and also the matchup advantages right here on this free video. Stay tuned. That's coming up. Five top 25, the five biggest college football games this Saturday, my personal power ratings and how I would play them in just a moment. Quick reminder, though, if you want my official best bets, the same games that I'm using, same games that my personal clients are getting this Saturday, you need to go to wagertalk.com. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. And you need to use this promo code because if you're taking a serious investment approach, you want to play each and every day the entire football season, and now is the time to get on board. The start of college football is here. The NFL begins in just one week and save $200 on the entire season with promo code COMBO200. Normally, it's $8.99 for the next five and a half months of my college and pro football, but with COMBO200, it's just $6.99. That's an instant $200 discount for the entire college and pro football season, all of September, October, November, December, January, and February through Super Bowl in next year for just a $200 discount, combo 200. Just $6.99 gets you the next five and a half months, every college and pro football play, and now is the time to do it. Combo 200, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Hey, let's start with the first kickoff on Saturday. It's an early game at 12 noon Eastern. You don't have to wait long for a Big Ten battle between Penn State and Wisconsin on Fox National TV. Currently, Wisconsin is about a five and a half point favorite across the board. The total is around 49 and a half. I think the line is too low. My power ratings actually favor the Badgers by eight and a half points in this game. Once again, my power ratings favor Wisconsin by eight and a half. And not only are we getting three points in line value over the current line of five and a half, but more importantly, we're crossing some key numbers, six and seven. So the line value is definitely with Wisconsin. And I like the matchup here. You know, both these teams had difficult 2020 seasons, as many programs did. And I think both Penn State and Wisconsin performed well under expectations due to COVID. Uh, Wisconsin had multiple shutdowns, two or three different times they had to shut down. And they really kind of got screwed over. You know, the Big Ten said you're going to have to play six regular season games or five. Yeah, six, I believe it was, to make the postseason. Wisconsin was going to have trouble getting there. They really kind of took their foot off the gas after that. Then all of a sudden they changed the rule for Ohio State, who was having trouble getting all their games in. Uh, with all that said, though, Wisconsin still finished with a 4-3 and three winning record, and I think they're going to carry some momentum into this season. A good line of scrimmage, great defense. They held teams to just 96 rushing yards last year, just 300 total yards. Good defensive favorite here, laying less than a touchdown at home. And once again, the line value is with Wisconsin based on my power ratings. I favor them by 8.5. Current line is only 5.5. That goes at noon Eastern, Saturday afternoon on Fox. Next game goes at 3.30 Eastern, another Big Ten battle. I talked about this game earlier this week, Indiana, Iowa, on one of the wagertalk.com, wagertalk TV uh, preview videos. We did this game, myself and Tony Finn. Also talked about it Friday afternoon on the college football show here on Wager Talk TV as well with Dave Koken and Joe Ranieri. I like Iowa in this game. And once again, like Wisconsin, I think the line is too short for the home favorite. My power ratings favor Iowa by six and a half points. Current line has gone up a bit. When I did the video back on Tuesday for Wager Talk TV, uh, it was a solid three across the board. It's now up to minus four as we head into Saturday, Friday night into the weekend. Keep in mind, though, it opened as high as five and a half earlier this summer. So it had come all the way down to three. We saw a little bit of buyback now in Iowa to minus four, but it's not enough. Once again, my power ratings favor the Hawkeyes by six and a half points in this game. And I have no problem fading Indiana. These were two teams that both went six and two last year. Indiana outscored opponents by eight and a half points a game. Iowa outscored opponents 32 to 16. They were a really good team last year. Indiana got a lot of hype because they came out of nowhere, um, but Iowa was actually the better squad. And lane four on a strong home field shows that the odds makers and the betting public do not realize that. Indiana had a nice season last year, no question about it. They were six and one. They lost their bowl game, finished six and two. But offensively, they were challenged. They averaged just three yards a carry, just 100 yards rushing per game. Iowa, meanwhile, 171 yards per game on the ground, four and a half yards a carry, and a stout run defense that allowed just two and a half yards per rush. So it's almost certain that Iowa is going to have the rushing edge in this game. And whenever I can take a home favorite at minus four, which I know is going to win the rushing edge, and I have some power rating value, it's worth a look. Iowa Hawkeyes, 
minus four. The line is too short. My power ratings say it should be six and a half. That goes at 3.30 Eastern Saturday afternoon, Big Ten Network. All right, that's a couple of Big Ten games. Let's look at the, one of the biggest games of the week here, and definitely a, definitely a high-profile national TV game, also at 3.30 Eastern on ABC, and that's Alabama-Miami. Neutral field here. This game will be played at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, maybe a slight Alabama home field edge here, but uh, I think Miami will travel a little bit as well. Uh, Bama's always tough out of the gate. It's not a surprise. Nick Saban, one of the best coaches ever in the history of college football. You give him a full August, a full month to prepare for the opener. Not a surprise. He's like Bill Belichick. He's going to have a great game plan every year. But Alabama really got hit hard in the offseason. I know they reload. There's no question they reload. They had the talent to do it. But they lost six players in the top 24 of the NFL draft. And keep in mind, five of those six were offensive players. You know, it used to always be Bama defensive players that went first. Now it's their offense. And this team averaged 48 and a half points a game last year. They averaged 47 the year before that. With only three returning starters on offense and losing half of your offense to the top 24 of the NFL draft, they're going to have to regress. Now, of course, if they regress 20% is what I'm factoring in, they still average 40 points a game. So it's not like they're going to be a bad offense. They'll be a powerhouse. But I just think out of the gate here early in the season, you have to be careful with a team that went 13-0 and last year. More importantly, they went 9-4 and against the spread. The oddsmakers just could not set the numbers high enough last year. Alabama kept winning and covering. Um, so I do think there'll be some inflated lines this year. However, this is not one of them. My power ratings actually make Alabama a 20-point favorite in this game on the neutral field. Current line, 19 and a half. So technically, there's a teeny bit of line value with Alabama. I'm going to call it a wash because the difference between 19 and a half and 20 is pretty much nothing. But my point is this line is not inflated like I thought it would be. Um, and so there's really not much line value either way. Miami of Florida does have the makings of a dangerous underdog, though. What you want to look for with these big dogs is that backdoor cover potential. And obviously, Miami, with a very potent offense that averaged 34 points a game last year, six yards per play, 440 yards a game does have backdoor cover potential. So once again, a late touchdown could get them within this number. Um, Alabama strong out of the gate historically, young on offense this year. Miami, a veteran team. Quarterback King looks like he is healthy. Uh, so Miami might be able to keep this one close. But once again, not much line value based on my power ratings. I make the line 20. It's currently 19 and a half. That goes at 3.30 Eastern on Saturday afternoon on ABC. Going to look at two more of the top 25 matchups for you for Saturday. Just a quick reminder, if you want my personal best bets, there's just one way to get them, the same games I am personally using. By the way, I started as a full-time professional sports better in 1996. That was 25 years ago. That means this is my 26th football season beginning. I've done this for a quarter century. I've made my living with the same plays that I give my clients. They have a true mathematical edge, and now is the time to get them. If you want to try it out this weekend, get my Saturday best bets right now at wagertalk.com or the best value Take a true investment approach. Play consistently every week, all season, college and pro football, and save $200 when you sign up right now with promo code COMBO200, C-O-M-B-O, COMBO200, 200, COMBO200, gets the price down from $899 to $699. That gets every college and pro football play for the next five and a half months through the Bulls, through the national title, through the Super Bowl in February of 2022. COMBO200. $6.99 for everything for the next five and a half months. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Hey, let's look at the surprise top 25 matchup of the week. And it was a surprise because I didn't realize Louisiana Lafayette was a top 25 team. And even Texas with the new head coach is a kind of a borderline top 25 team, but it qualifies. And now Louisiana plays at Texas. Now keep in mind, Louisiana, at least in the betting rotation, is still UL Lafayette, even they want to go by Louisiana. Louisiana Monroe plays at Kentucky on Saturday. Louisiana Lafayette, a.k.a. Louisiana Top 25, is at Texas. And this game goes at 4.30 Eastern, also on the Fox Network, follows that Wisconsin-Penn State game that we talked about earlier. Texas is an interesting team. Obviously a powerhouse program, but they've kind of come upon hard times. Haven't won at the level they are expecting. Herman has gone after four seasons. Uh, this is the guy that went 32-18 and 18 in four seasons. Uh, I believe he was 25-12 and 12 the last three after a 7-6 and six start his first year yet it still wasn't enough. So the pressure is on. They bring in Steve Sarkeesian, Alabama offensive coordinator, should be a powerhouse head coach, but there might be some growing pains. And because of that, a lot of people feel like Louisiana, UL Lafayette is a live dog in this game. And the point spread is obviously saying that it's in the single digit range. Uh, right now, Lafayette's only about an eight and a half, nine point dog. 
However, my power ratings actually make Texas a 14 and a half point favorite. So I do think the line is too low. I know it's tough to know exactly what to make of Texas out of the gate here uh, with the new head coach. They lost a lot of players too. When Herman was you know, kicked out uh, before they knew exactly who the coach is going to be, a lot of players started to transfer, put their names in the portal. Um, so there is some uncertainty with Texas, but I think that's factored into the line here. And I still think there's a huge class difference between these two programs. You know, Louisiana Lafayette had a great season last year in the Sun Belt, but it's still the Sun Belt. Texas is not only a Big 12 team, they're soon to be an SEC team in a few years. And I think on the line of scrimmage, Texas is veteran this year, and that's where the difference is going to be. Uh, they have a strong offensive line returning, also a strong running back in Robinson. I think they're going to pound the ball on the ground in this game, and I'm just not sure a Sun Belt team can stop them. Uh, so once again, a lot of uncertainty with the Longhorns. Lafayette is a dangerous underdog. Keep in mind, they went into uh, Iowa State last year in week one and one outright as an 11.5 point dog. Iowa State turned out to be a very good team. Uh, but I think that'll have Texas on focus this week. And uh, we'll look for the Longhorns to use that rushing attack that averaged five and a half yards per carry on the ground against a UL Lafayette team that allowed 185 rushing yards a game despite playing a weak Sunbelt schedule overall. So there is some line value with Texas. I make the line 14 and a half. It's currently only eight and a half. Final game for Saturday, final top 25 matchup we're going to talk about is the biggest game of the week because it's 7.30 Eastern on Saturday night on ABC, and that's Georgia at Cle against Clemson, neutral field in Charlotte. Um, both teams will travel extremely well for this game. Uh, once again, Georgia and Clemson heading up to Charlotte to play this game on a neutral field. Line is a solid three heading into the weekend. Clemson, a three-point neutral field favorite. I make the line three and a half. Now, that might only be a half point of line value, uh, but it's a critical number because three is the most important betting number in all of sports. College football favorites are going to win by exactly a field goal about eight to nine percent of the time. So if three and a half is truly the number, like my power ratings say, there is some value with Clemson at minus three or less. Uh, JT Daniels, you know, this is going to be the quarterback of the future for Georgia, and he's the guy that's going to take them or break them. Uh, he was the top five, top 10 high school recruit, the third highest recruited quarterback coming out. Guess who was ahead of him his year? Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields, who went 1-11 in the NFL draft this year. So obviously there's a ton of potential for Georgia this season, but we still have to see it on the field. Um, yes, Trevor Lawrence is gone for Clemson, but DJ, I've been pronouncing this. I don't have it in front of me, but I've been practicing. Uyungulele, six syllables. Uyungulele, how do you like that? is the quarterback. And keep in mind, he played two games last year in the middle of the season when Lawrence was out, and he was fantastic. They lost that game at Notre Dame in overtime, and it wasn't because of the offense. It was the defense. It was a high-scoring game. Uh, DJ is one of the top uh, two or three favorites to win the Heisman. And keep in mind, Trevor Lawrence came in as a true freshman and took them to the national title. So I do not think, despite losing the number one overall NFL draft pick, there will be much of a drop-off for Clemson offensively. Um, and, you know, this should be a high-scoring game. Two good offenses. Uh, two defenses are good as well, but I think the uh, total is pretty low considering uh, the potential that both of these quarterbacks have. Uh, right now in the low 50s for this game on the over-under, uh, right now 51 across the board. That also a very key number for totals. And once again, my power ratings favor Clemson by three and a half. The line currently 351, so a little bit of line value with Clemson. Should be a great game on Saturday night, 730 Eastern on ABC. Hey, I hope you found this information valuable. We're going to do this video each and every week. Give me your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know, first of all, who you like this weekend in college football. Let me know what type of videos you'd like to see. I know many of you are anxiously awaiting the Fade the Public NFL video, and that will debut next weekend with the start of week one of the NFL regular season. We started that late November last year, and it went 31-7, and seven, fading the most public NFL plays every week. We're going to do it from week one on this year each and every weekend right here on Wager Talk TV. And that is why you must subscribe. It's free to subscribe. Click the button right now. And if you really want to get alerts, click the bell right next to the subscribe button. And the minute my NFL Fade the Public video is ready next week, you will get a personal alert and you can be the first to watch it and take advantage and make your plays based on that information. So once again, subscribe, click the bell if you want live alerts, and give it a thumbs up if you found this useful content. And give me some comments below. Let me know who you like this weekend in college football. Don't forget that promo code COMBO200, COMBO200, $200 discount for the full college and pro football season right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. I appreciate you watching. Subscribe, like, and comment below, and check back each and every day right here on Wager Talk TV for great free information. Best of luck this weekend. I'll talk to you again soon.